the big difference comes down to the cost savings. So if you have money to spend and it, cost savings is not your primary driver, I think, sure, pick, pick private or a hybrid cloud. But if your primary driver is to try to save massive money on your total cost of ownership, really the only option is public cloud. So that is our recommendation. Right? We think uh, cost is always an issue for CSPs. Right? They're co under constant pressure. It's only getting worse as voice traffic comes down. And so if you're, if you're out to save a lot of money, really the only way is to go all the way to the public cloud. So we get this question a lot, right? I mean, a lot of people hear about AWS, and they think, oh, they're the biggest, they're winning, that's who I should pick. Um, but we think in telco specifically, um, really GCP, Google Cloud Platform, is the one telco should pick. And there's four reasons for that. So number one, their security story is really, really strong. They spent between 30 and $40 billion US um, in their security strategy. They've been under attack for 20 years, and now they're passing on all their learnings and their resiliency to other customers. And so, you know, Oh, all of the providers have a great story, but Google's is particularly strong. It's been um, recognized by Forrester as being particularly strong and one of the best. I think number two, the database, especially when it comes to charging and BSS, really does matter. And so we looked at all the different databases of the different public cloud providers, and the Google Cloud Spanner was differentiated. It was faster than Oracle. We felt it could be 10 times faster than Oracle and 10 times cheaper than Oracle. And so for CSPs who've been spending hundreds of millions of dollars, if not more than that, with, with Oracle, this is a really big opportunity to get a database that's better and cheaper. And really the only offering is, is Google. Um, number three, a lot of people don't understand that Google has invested in their own private network. And so they have what they call a cold potato algorithm. That's what they call it. So if you think of a cold potato as opposed to a hot potato, trying to get rid of it, Google tries to get you on their private network as soon as possible and they carry you all the way into the data center. And I think this is an advantage over, say, AWS, where you're using the public internet to get to the data center. So with AWS, it might be fast one time, it might be a little bit slower next time, but for a system like charging, um, we need deterministic latency. We need to have reliable speed every single time because that's really important. So we think the private network is, uh, is important when it comes to, to GCP and they're the only ones that have, have done that investment. And they did that for their own search business and now they're letting other people leverage that for their own gain. So we think that's a really strong reason. And number four, the technical superiority of Google. Just in general, from their people to just their cloud offerings, their BI tools are really strong. I think last Friday or maybe the Friday before that, Gartner has written a, a paper on this on how they see Google being technically superior to AWS. So we think those four reasons for telco, I think the speed of this application is important, the database is really important, security is really important, and then just if you're going to bet on a player, bet on Google. So that's why we think there's a big difference. You've got to do your homework. You'll see this a lot in our industry where people will just say cloud very generically and they're not very specific, public cloud versus private cloud. And what we have found as an application vendor, it's, it's pretty easy to pick up an application and say it runs in the cloud or it runs in the, in, the, in the public cloud. But Optiva has pledged $100 million to re-architect our products to take advantage. I mean, BSS is an older uh, product space, right? It's been around for 20, 25 years. And so some of these newer technologies that the cloud providers are offering are only five or eight years old. And so what we're having to do is really re-architect the guts of our product. And we're using a product that's worked for ages, right, that a lot of customers around the world use today. But we're really just re-architecting it to take advantage of this newer technology. And that takes work, right? We could have just said, hey, we're cloud ready and say we run in the cloud without doing much work at all. But we're really taking the time to say, how can we take advantage of some of this newer technology so that we can get the huge cost savings, right? We're trying to get 80% lower TCO. And so we're, we're re-architecting our products with that in mind. So do your homework with your vendor to make sure they're not just picking it up and putting it there. They're really taking advantage of what makes pu uh, public cloud great. We think that all these problems are, you can overcome them. So you really, like I said, understand the security story of each of the vendors that you're considering. 
Um, but there's a lot of ways around sort of data privacy and, and uh, security concerns. You can anonymize the data, right, before it even gets to the public cloud vendor. A lot of them offer encryption end to end. Some of them even let you, like Google, let you bring your own encryption key. So I think a lot of people just sort of say, oh, I can't. Um, you know, oh, it has to be in country. And if Google doesn't have a data center in my country or AWS doesn't have a data center in my country, they just sort of stop right there and then they, they you know, revert to private cloud. And we're like, no, there's a lot of ways to skin this cat. And you're going to want to take advantage of standing on the shoulders of these giants to leverage their security investment and the resiliency that they've built in. I mean, you just can't compete with $33 billion spend on on security, right? And your own, right, your IT department can't build the tools that Google's built. So you're going to want to say, okay, let's kind of look at this with a fresh new set of eyes. How can we work through these problems? And, I mean, in some cases you can't, right? Some countries have data sovereignty concerns, and if you know Google's not there, you know it's a little bit harder. But we have found in almost every case we've been able to, you know, work around it and come up with a solution that works for a CSP. I think a lot of times when IT departments look at moving to the public cloud, they treat the cloud vendors like a, a data center being managed by an Amazon or a Google. And they assume that their installation on the ground, if you imagine a, a spatula, right, they're just gonna pick it up and move it to the public cloud. And I call that sort of that lift and shift approach. Um, and really what you have to do is really understand the benefits of the public cloud. What are the new technologies and innovations that you can leverage in your application and then make your applications take advantage of that. And so a really good example of this is the hardware that you're using today. Today CSPs provision their hardware for a peak of peak. Right, so they take you know, a three or five year view, they look at what their expected peak is, and then they kind of bump it up just in case it's, they're, they're wrong. And then they buy that hardware and they provision it because today if they're wrong, it takes probably three to six months to buy extra capacity. Um, and so we think it's really important to leverage the public cloud and the elasticity so you can scale up and scale, scale down, buy compute and database resources when you need it. And so that takes a re-architecture of an application to take advantage of these different kinds of new technology. And so that's where this big savings really comes in. I think that's number one. The cost of compute of uh, a Google compute minutes versus a server on the ground. You know, server versus server, it's probably cheaper on the ground. But when you start to add the HR, the labor cost, um, the network cost, the maintenance, and you really build it up and then you scale it out, the cost is usually 30 to uh, close to 40% cheaper in the public cloud. And that's what people don't really realize, right? They kind of just look at it, you know, they try to do apples to apples, but then when you, when you really start to investigate it, it's cheaper to move to the public cloud. So um, it's really surprising. Um, it's a myth. And so we, you know, at Optivo, we've really been spending time with customers. So like, let's talk about this. Let's really get into the details and educate people on this opportunity, right? I mean, this is, uh, you know, the world is changing. This industry is being disrupted. And instead of spending your dollars on managing racks, we say, take that savings and then focus it on your customer and win those subscribers and keep those subscribers.